Hey guys, Big Dave here for Tales of Talara, and welcome to Warfronts. Yeah, that's right, Warfronts! Exclamation mark. Warfronts is my weekly Rift show where I attempt to take Rift's PVE community, including myself, and help us get a little bit better at Warfronts. Yes. Those of us who choose to occasionally engage in Warfronts while leveling, well, we don't always know what we're doing, and this show aims to help us learn from our own mistakes. How do we do that? Well, we've got the four guidelines. Yes, the guidelines. Take them in, read them, memorize them, and always remember the fifth guideline, have fun, right? It is a game, after all, so we want to try to have fun. Now, if you tuned in last week, you will already know that we will be featuring my cleric. I did stop her at level 19 rather than be 22 or 23 and a little bit underpowered versus the higher level competition in the 20 to 29 bracket. I stopped at the high end of the 10 to 19 bracket so that I can feel overpowered when rolling over level 11s. Well, that sets our scene and time is ticking, guys, so let's get to the action. Okay guys, we are right into the action on this one. No countdown, no waiting in the spawn area. This match has only just started. I really liked it, that's why I chose it, despite the uh, no ramp up time. We uh, Guardians, we have the Fang, and I am right out of the gate trying to contribute in any way I can. I am on my Cleric again, level 19, Inquisitor spec, backed up by Warden and Purifier. That means that I am an effective healer and damage dealer, and I am going to do both of those things. I'm not as effective as a support class. I don't get any healing from my damage, but I do heal and do damage both. And I do both somewhat well damage better than healing. So we're going to start things off again. This match, we want to try to, uh, to stay aggressive. Uh, a, a, a skilled player named Base comes out and uh, immediately starts harassing our Fang Carrier. He is not allowing us to control him. He comes out and he manages to down our Fang Carrier. The rest of his team is being controlled. I grab the Fang, and in order to try to break this, to sort of knock some sense into his team, I just come to the center of the pit. I come to the center of the pit because I just want to draw them. I, I want to draw them out. If we can draw them all to the center and we can kill them all, then that gives us a whole spawn cycle, a whole respawn cycle, to just rack up the points. I'm pulling in six points per tick here. You don't have to be in the dead center to do that. But again, here comes the great player. This is the defiant standout. Base. He comes in and takes me out. I guess it's a she character. Um, but I felt confident that I could, uh, that my team would pick me up there, that my team would grab the fang. I had been playing with this team a couple of other uh, games, so we almost felt like a pre-made by this point. Um, we weren't, but we had been all queuing in the same pattern, and we had been getting, uh, a lot of a lot of us have been getting the same games, especially this cat rape in a can. Um, however you get that in a can, I'm not sure. Um, but really what we ended up doing is we ended up functioning more like a pre-made. I, I had confidence that these guys were going to pick me up, that I could stand in the middle, try to draw out the enemy, and that it wasn't going to cost my team anything. And it didn't. So here we go. I'm back to what I was doing before. Staying versatile. A little bit of damage, a little bit of healing, um, trying to use my abilities to their fullest. I'm going to step up, do a little damage, keep, in a, keep, keep that eye on... on <laughs> rape in a can and uh, immediately here he is again base base is back and base is going to town on our flag carrier base is clearly a skilled player trapped on a very very bad team and again even though base uh, manages to down the flag uh, the fan carrier base has no support whatsoever um, this game is clearly in hand. I'm doing some damage, and again, keeping my eye on that Fang Carrier's life. And I decide, you know what? I'm going to try and get aggressive. I drop one more uh, heal on the Fang Carrier, and I go out to attempt to control as many of these players as I can. These guys that are hanging around here, I want to try to round them up and control them so that we can secure the victory. Here, myself and another player, we gather up about four guys and we control these four guys. We keep them far away from our fang carrier. We get them right into the trap that we want them into and this is typical of this team. I mean, this team that we were up against was not... Uh, were, clearly, they were not viewers of my videos because they were doing all the wrong things, uh, allowing themselves to be controlled, uh, not concentrating on the fang carrier, not moving towards the goals, and consequently, 
we are victorious. So Bass was a fantastic player on that team. As you can see, I was not so much. Because of my uh, heal and DPS tendencies uh, on this character, I had a little bit of both. Decent on the healing, decent on the DPS. In the end, I feel uh, I didn't get a lot of favor, and I feel that on this character a lot, because this isn't a support character that does healing through damage. I have to do damage or healing. Uh, I don't usually get a lot of favor on this character. Anyway, guys, I think that was a pretty good match. Let's think about what we learned from that match. What have we learned? Well, we learned that you can sometimes do stupid things or, or seemingly stupid things, aggressive things, if you have a team to back you up. In this case, this wasn't a pre-made, but I knew the tendencies of these players, and I knew that they would back me up. What else did we learn? We learned that a single player does not a team make. That player base was very good. He could put out some severe damage and down the fan carrier twice on his own. But, in the end, without more people to support him, he wasn't effective. And finally, we were given a stark reminder of the effectiveness of control. That defiant team allowed themselves to be controlled, with, with the exception, of course, of base, who I highlighted throughout the video. That defiant team lost that game the moment that they didn't engage, that they didn't move forward, and that they accepted the battle on our terms. That's the moment they lost. It doesn't matter what the score was at that moment. The moment that they accepted our terms for battle, they lost. And that makes you ineffective, and that makes you controlled. Base knew that. The rest of the team didn't. Okay, now let's talk about next week. Next week, we are going to break up the monotony. We are going to break up the Black Garden Fest that we've been having in the first four episodes of this show. And we are going to take my level 39 Necro Mage into... Whitefall Steps. That's right. We're going to go into Whitefall Steps, the Capture the Flag style Warfront. Are you ready? I don't know if I am because I don't know if I've ever really had a good game in Whitefall Steps, but we are going to try it. That's my level 39 Necromancer Mage Whitefall Steps next week, level 39, level 39. God, I just realized I'm still level 39. I've been level 39 on that character for four weeks. Thank you, Warfronts. You distract me in all my free playing time. <sighs> but I enjoy it. So, guys, next week, Mage, level 39, Wife All Steps, into a new battleground. Excuse me, Warfront. Did I just call it a battleground on the show called Warfronts? I did. All right, guys. I'm going to end this before I make more of a fool of myself. I'll see you next week. Take it easy.